How's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel and welcome back to Avaset Point in Planet Zoo. After a pretty decent absence, I haven't put on Avaset Point episode in... Gosh, has it been like 3-4 weeks? God, has it been over a month? Oh no. Well, I'm, I really i am sorry for the, the lack of Avaset Point episodes. It is a zoo I'm really keen on continuing. Of course, it's brand new uh, and I quite like that, the fact that it's all... You know, very much a new zoo because we've been working on October Lake for well over a year and, you know, October Lake isn't going anywhere. We're still working on finishing it up. I think there's maybe five episodes left in October Lake. So we'll definitely be getting back into that. I'm not going to just abandon that one. Not like I did with the uh, the other one, <laughs> Sanikov Land back in the day. God, I reopened the Sanikov Land folder the other day, so the, the save file, and I had a look inside and I was like, you know what, this was a nice zoo, maybe I should return to it. But, you know, that's a that's a pipe dream at best, because it's such a, it's been such a, such a long time since I even looked at Sanikov Land. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that, that pans out. But yeah, here we are back in Avocet Point, and what I wanted to do today was actually, first off, I wanted to expand the deer habitat because I realized it was actually really small. Like after taking some time away from Avisat Point, just because I didn't have an awful lot of time to build, and coming back into it, I realized, okay, that deer habitat is far too small. Even a low budget zoo wouldn't make a deer habitat that small. So I decided to expand it by quite a bit, give them a lot more free space to roam around, give them this interesting kind of rock formation slash planter area in the middle with a bunch of mulch and stuff in it. And I think it works out a lot better. I've been able to add a few more deer in there as well, uh, two or three. In fact, one of them is really cool. Um, we actually end up with a melanistic uh, deer. We have one melanistic female in here, which is really cool because playing sandbox mode, you don't often actually see the variations in, in the animals. Like, of course you do see the, the more minor variations, like, you know, the subtle differences in color and stuff. But you don't see the major ones like le uh, leucistic animals, melanistic animals, or things like that. You really don't see them very often. Um, for people who play challenge and franchise mode, I believe that's a, a much easier way to find these animals because they appear on the market a lot more. Um, but yeah, that was really rare and uh, it's really cool. So I'm, I'm glad we have that one unique deer in here. You'll see it in the cinematics. And I think next week what I might do as well, or maybe not next week, but the next time we do an episode, uh, Hopefully it's next week. Gosh, I'm not going to leave you guys for another month, uh, hopefully. <laughs> um, I'll do like a live tour. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, like a live tour and maybe we'll go on and actually look at some of the animals. And I think that'll be quite nice as well. But beyond just expanding this habitat, we of course expand the shelter as well so that we can accommodate more deer and we're making this nice like C shape. I think it, it ends up looking quite good. And after this, we're gonna go and re-attempt our badger habitat. So the badger habitat was, of course, the first thing I ever built in Avocet Point, and then immediately scrapped it because I wasn't feeling it. Um, but I decided to remake it, and I think it turns out really, really nice. I'm quite happy with it, uh, using, you know, just a few, a uh, few interesting techniques and a few, like, different styles of building. And you know, I, I think it ends up looking quite nice. It's nothing too fancy, but but it really suits the badges, I think. And I think it's a good blueprint to work off because I think that way we can build other like similar habitats, like small animal habitats around it, and it kind of will fit in place. Um, here I'm just struggling a little bit with some uh, kind of irregular building pieces, which honestly is entirely on me because, um, as you may notice, at a set point is a little bit more free flow than October Lake was. With October Lake, all my buildings and everything I built was very strictly on, well, I say very strictly, as much as I could manage, I tried to keep everything on a 15 degree angle so that no matter where I am, if I snap to angles, I'll be able to line things up with everything else really easily and keep the park looking very neat. And that's why if you look at October Lake, and if you go back to any of the videos where you can see October Lake from above, it looks almost a little bit like a circuit board because everything's so precisely angled. Um, however, with Avocet Point, I want this to be a lot more organic, a lot more free flow, so very few, if um, any buildings or parts or anything like that, are actually on an angle. All of these things are very much just built um, just kind of according to the landscape, according to how I feel, kind of just as and you know as and when the i don't know where that sentence is going <laughs> but basically just kind of free flow and I, I really like how it kind of 
has made me build in some more unique ways although it does create some tricky parts like you saw with the architecture earlier as you can see here with like trying to fill in the fences in in like really odd shapes uh ends up just making you have to be a little bit more creative which i am a-okay with basically it ends up looking quite nice i think things like this where you you kind of have to fill in the gaps in in unique ways and i think that's going to create some unique challenges for us as we go along with our set point but i'm looking forward to it you know i think um i think it should be good and i think the park is going to come along quite nicely I am gonna, I think, treat this like opening area kind of a bit more like how I treated the otter habitat in October Lake where I, well I was happy with it at the time, I didn't end up coming back and changing it later down the line once I'd establish a bit more of an identity for the zoo which is something I'm, I'm still struggling a bit with at a set point, I still haven't quite figured out what the identity of the zoo is going to be like. Uh, but of course as we go along I'm sure that will develop a bit more and we can start figuring it out and really coming to terms with what this is going to be like going forward and from there we can revisit all their habitats and stuff like that and of course change them to to fit a little bit more in line with what this ends up being. Um, but yeah, here we're starting of course in the badger habitat. I'm not going to talk too much about the animal itself uh, because I did in the previous badger habitat I think. Uh, did I ever mention, I'm pretty sure I mentioned the badger story a million times about how I once got spooked by a badger in the middle of the night. It's not much of a story, honestly. But, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really cool. Um, the badger is still one of my favorite animals from the European DLC, uh, along with the fallow deer. I think those are my two favorites, though I do like the lynx as well. Uh, the ibex is probably, oh gosh, I can never choose in these packs which are my like favorite favorites, you know? Like this always happens, like I remember the aquatic pack, I remember saying a million times that each animal was my favorite individually and then, to, you know, it's like that. But yeah, um, the badger is really cool. I decided to make for it a much smaller habitat than we, oh, not smaller, sorry, a bit more of a densely packed habitat than we did last time. So the first round of this habitat where we built the badger habitat um, in episode one, I really ended up making it kind of more like a habitat for a much larger animal. Whereas badgers are pretty, well they, you know, they're big but they're not like gigantic by any means. And I thought, you know, these guys are really good at burrowing and climbing, well not climbing but like scuttling over undergrowth and just kind of like, I wanted to give them more to do within a habitat so I gave them a little climbing uh, thing up into the shelter over here lots and lots of logs and branches and stuff for them to clamber over and you know just in to interact with in the environment give them a sense of security as well so lots of hiding places you know just to feel a bit more like yeah secure I guess that's the right word and I think it ends up looking quite nice and makes it feel a lot more appropriate for this kind of animal I think for smaller animals like this I always end up I guess um, forgetting that they they really do benefit from just having extra like places to hide and to climb, just any added security is great for them. So I think it ends up looking quite nice. You can see with the building itself, it's nothing too fancy. It's just a, a brick cube essentially, but it'll provide kind of like an implied shelter for them, an implied area where keepers can check up on them. And of course there's bedding in there and all that, and they can retreat into it whenever they feel overwhelmed if there's too many people about or anything like that. It's a bit sunken as well, this habitat, uh, which I think fits the nature of the animal as kind of a subterranean little guy. <laughs> um, here, I, there, I've i been struggling with this recently a lot. I do this a lot where, um, especially in my previous park, where I build paths really close to an edge of um, like a, a dip into a habitat and then I build like an additional extension to the path essentially where the fence will be. And I struggle making those look unique each time, I guess. Um, here I thought maybe I'll do a glass fence, but the glass pieces are really thick. So I end up sticking with, you know, the standard kind of chain. Um, is it chain link? Not really chain link. Uh, it's just a mesh fence, basically, which I still think is amazing. Like, Plan as you giving us mesh pieces was a game changer for me. These are incredible, incredible pieces. And yeah, because it is curving around a lot, it's a bit tricky to get the pieces to line up perfectly and by the end they don't quite line up perfectly but I think like especially from a distance it looks like good enough essentially where you wouldn't necessarily notice it super immediately 
And like I said before, at the end of the day, this zoo is meant to be somewhat of a low budget zoo. Not necessarily low budget, I'd say it's more like they were restricted with money but they do the best they can for the animals um, and because of that maybe the guest facing areas don't always get the most attention and I think that's probably the identity we're going to kind of stick with as we progress along the zoo. But yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with how this, this habitat kind of turns out. You know, lots of little raised bits. Um, the plants I'm trying to vary a bit more as well to kind of create some more interesting layout. Uh, I don't want to end up like sticking with just the same few plants over and over again. As much as I think that's a good, like, I actually very much like doing that for the most part because it creates a really strong sense of like, okay, we're in this environment and these are the types of plants that are present. But at the same time, I want to introduce plants where it would look like, okay, the keepers or the habitat designers will have designed this area specifically with planters in mind so that you can plant some maybe slightly different plants, but that would require more specific care than the plants that are already present in this environment. So I kind of hope it worked out like that. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, as you can see, maybe you will have noticed in the thumbnail and you'll see in a bit. I actually go back and forth a bit on this. Uh, I include some of these really nice um, ponytail palms which came with the aquatic pack because they look really good when you put them, when you sink them into the ground a bit and have just the fronts of the palms coming out of like behind a log or out of a planter. This looks really nice, has a pop of this really vibrant green. And you can see here, this is just me like kind of debating which plant to use and there they are, the ponytail palms. And I think they look fantastic there. It looks like, you know, very intentionally placed there. Like that was really part of the habitat design. And I, and I think it works out really brilliantly and it looks really good. But yeah, um, as far as anything else with this habitat goes, we're pretty much coming to the end. But I just want to, yeah, you, you see me going back and forth in those ponytail palms and trying other trees. I'll try a million other trees here that just, I end up going back to those. But yeah, um, just a quick note on just how everything else has been going on the channel. Um, of course, you've been noticing I'm playing lots of Jurassic World Evolution. Uh, we've started a new park there as well. Still very keen on that game, not you know, not gonna slow down anytime soon with those. Uh, as for the Planet Zoo videos, I'm not gonna lie, I've had a bit of um, a creative block recently. Uh, I know I've had one of those before, and Aversat Point has been unfortunately right in the middle of that, where my first episode I had a horrendous creative block and it was just a nightmare, and then now I'm having another one, but I'm still happy with what I'm building at the moment, so I'm, I'm pleased with that at least. But yeah, it's just, um... I don't know why, I think I've been struggling a little bit creatively and uh, it's nice to I think take a break for a while and come back to it. So I think having some time away from Planet Zoo has been good for me because coming back to it now I've got a few more ideas. And also I think I really want to just kind of um, take that pressure off a little bit. Sometimes I do feel a bit of pressure to put out like interesting builds each time, you know, something new every single time. But you know, at the end of the day I just want to have fun with the game because this is my favorite game probably of all time. I don't really want to, you know, burn myself out, out on it at any point. Um, and yeah, I, I've been enjoying it more and more recently, especially after taking a little bit of a break from it. And recently, I, I realized as well, um, watching more Planet Zoo YouTubers online, like just checking out some which I've not heard of before or some like just, you know, loads of different channels where maybe the building style is different from what I'm used to, stuff like that. It's been providing so much inspiration and, you know, loads of really, really incredible creators out there, which I've been watching for a long time as well, and watching them, uh, like, revisiting some of the old builds, for example, like, really, really uh, helps, I think, in, you know, just uh, fueling that inspiration a bit, and it's also just really cool watching what other people build. Like, oh gosh, people build some incredible stuff, you know, out there. I gotta say, like, just, I I, if, I don't know, like, if I can even make a single recommendation. There's just so many worth watching. Like, I'd say if you want to, like, um, see some really cool builds, just go to my Twitter and, like, look at, like, who I follow, basically. I follow most of the Planet Zoo YouTubers that I watch regularly, and they're just fantastic. Um, but, yeah, no, they're, they're really good watching more and kind of getting a bit more inspiration on that front as well. And uh, there's a little Easter egg hidden in this video, by the way. Um... At some point in this video, you might you might very quickly be able to see me save my game. And if you look at my saved file uh, list, you may notice something there because I might or might not have a project in the works that is very different from anything else I've done in Planet Zoo. So, you know, if you can catch that, maybe you'll uh, you'll have an idea for what's coming next. Uh, you know, it might come out in a few weeks or a few months. You never know, but it'll be cool. <laughs>
Anyways, that's the end of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Do leave a like, of course, if you liked the video. Subscribe for more Planet Z content. And as always, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!